Welcome to Corporate Governance at LSE. My name is Tom Kirchmeier and I have with me here Dirk Jenter from the LSE's Finance Department. You know, Dirk, you studied for a lifetime executive compensation, which is kind of the big thing. Everybody's concerned about it. You know, our, our colleague Ulf Axel said everything is perfect when it comes to, to remuneration in, uh, in the financial sector. But what about CEOs? So what do we know actually? How did CEO compensation develop over the last 10 years, 20 years? Well, I'm going to take an even longer term yeah. perspective today. Yeah. Um, CEO compensation is really a fascinating topic. And most people think of CEO compensation as this relentlessly ever rising monster. Um, and if you actually look at a longer history of it, and uh, my co-author Carola Friedman um, with some of her co-authors has done that and has collected some really wonderful data, we actually see a very, very different picture. And what's probably most interesting about it is that there are really three distinct periods. So you have a period from about the 1940s to the 1970s in which, at least in the US, CO compensation was essentially flat. Nothing happened to it for about 30 or 40 years. And then something changed, something that we're still trying to figure out at the end of the 1970s. And then CO, CO compensation just exploded. So from starting in about 1980 to the year 2000, CO compensation just went up by a factor of about six. And we're still trying to understand why. And now we seem to have entered a third regime starting at around the time the dot-com bubble burst, right around the year 2000, because since then, over the last 15 years, CO compensation once again has been roughly flat. Um, there are two other really interesting observations that come out of Carola's data and the data that we've looked at together, which is that that massive rise in CO compensation over the last 30 years is entirely a rise in incentive compensation, in bonuses, long-term incentive pay and especially equity-based compensation. So it was first about 20 years of options. So you got option compensation starting really coming in in the 1980s and then just exploding in the 1990s. And then in the last 10, 15 years, we've seen this big shift from option compensation to restricted stock. But that's all that has changed. And that's really that entire yeah. massive rise over the last 13 years is all equity-based compensation and other forms of incentive compensation. If you look at the cash component of pay, it is the same in 2010 as in 1980. So if we want to try to understand what happened to executive compensation, we're really trying to understand what happened to incentive compensation and especially option and stock compensation. And then the third really interesting observation is that that general rise in inequality we see just in every part of society that actually also applies to CEOs. So the difference between CEOs and other top executives has been going up a lot over the last 30 years. So in 1980, a CEO would probably earn about one and a half times as much as the second highest paid executive in a large publicly traded mm -hmm. firm. By now that ratio is about three. Um, and on top of that, the difference between CEOs, the compensation difference between CEOs in very large firms and smaller firms has also exploded. So somehow pay inequality which well, there really wasn't very much of that until about 1980, has also exploded among CEOs and even within firms between the CEO and the next highest paid executives. Mm -hmm. So we've just seen a massive regime shift over the last 30, 35 years. And that's really what's caused all of that public discussion. Yeah, it's super interesting. But the big question is, do shareholders benefit? That, yeah, is indeed the, that is indeed the billion-dollar yeah, question. Yeah. Um, and it is an ongoing debate. I mean, the public debate has been virulent, to put it mildly. And even among academics, uh, people disagree very strongly with each other. And there really are sort of two dominant views. One view is that it's a bad thing. It's all about powerful CEOs who control their own boards, paying themselves effectively enormous amounts of money. And to put it bluntly, effectively stealing money from shareholders. Mm -hmm. Now there's the second competing view which says no it is actually the outcome of a competitive marketplace in which shareholders and boards of directors decide to hire these very expensive CEOs and pay them enormous amounts of money because shareholders and boards are convinced that that is the right thing to do. That that is indeed the choice that maximizes shareholder value. And these two schools have been at each other's throat for at least the last 20 years. What's your view? It's complicated. <laughs> too. Um, having said that, um, 
If you look at the data, it is pretty clear that the view that it's all about powerful CEOs stealing from shareholders cannot explain that big time series trend that we just looked at. So that big explosion in CEO compensation since 1980. Because what happened in parallel to that is that corporate governance, so the power of shareholders over top executives, has improved. In the 1980s, we had all the hostile takeovers, which was really the first time that shareholders were taking on these imperial entrenched CEOs and were putting pressure on them. Now, in, 19, in, the, in after the 1980s, the hostile takeovers largely went away because of a number of regulatory changes. But then we got a massive presence of institutional investors, activist investors. And then in the 2000s, we got lots of regulatory changes, Sarbanes-Oxley, say on pay various other changes, all of which increased shareholder powers, made shareholders more powerful relative to CEOs. In parallel to that, we see CEO compensation rising like crazy. So you look at these two trends in parallel and you go, well, a story where somehow CEOs got a lot more powerful over the last 30 years and starting paying themselves more and more and more just doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't fit the time series evidence. Now, having said that, um, I don't want to deny that there are lots of excesses, that there are abuses. And I believe certainly the big explosion in the 1990s involved a lot of excess and a lot of abuse. And we see that in the data as well. So whenever we have an improvement in corporate governance, a change in corporate governance, whenever we're making shareholders more powerful or whenever we're increasing the disclosure, improving the disclosure of CEO compensation, CEO compensation seems to come down a little bit. Telling you that at least on the margin, at least in the tail of the distribution, there is some very bad stuff happening. And if you shine the bright light of disclosure on it, or if you empower shareholders to do something against it, indeed some of these excesses are being pushed back and the tail is coming in. And that also tells you that if you're looking at the typical executive, at a typical top executive or the typical CEO, we really haven't seen much of a change in CEO compensation or the level of CEO compensation over the last 15 years. But if you look at the tail of the distribution, say the top 10 or 20 percent highest paid executives, that has actually come in a lot over the last 10 or 15 years, telling you that some of the excesses we saw at or some of these very high pay packages we saw at the end of the 1990s, the early 2000s were probably truly excessive, were probably truly driven by empowered, entrenched CEOs paying themselves much more than shareholders deemed appropriate. And the moment we empowered shareholders, the moment we shined a bright light on that, shareholders pushed back and these, these things were indeed reined in. No, super interesting. One could almost argue that boards had to learn during the 1980s and 90s how to structure a good pay deal. I, I, and now they kind of learned it, they found the base, how to incentivize people. And this is partly why we see the plateau, but also why it, it comes down. I believe so. I really think, and I think this is a very, very important point, I believe we really need to distinguish sort of two potential problems here. One is one simply of just CEOs are too powerful, boards are in their pockets, and shareholders don't really have an ability to rein in what mm. CEOs are doing. There's a second problem, which is just shareholders don't know what to do, right? Which simply don't know what the optimally designed compensation package is. And you're absolutely right. There's certainly been a learning process going on over the last 30 years, which isn't at all surprising. And in some sense, we see technological processes, learning, technological learning in almost any area of society, in almost any area of corporations. It would be surprising if the same thing didn't also happen for CEO compensation. And I, in many ways, would wish that the entire conversation would shift a little bit away from complaining about the level of CEO compensation and more towards thinking and arguing about the proper design of CEO mm -hmm. compensation. And one of the big issues I think that we're facing right now is how to get CEOs and other top executives to truly think like long-term shareholders in firms. It's one thing to give a lot of options and a lot of stock to an executive, but if you don't do that right, you don't create an owner, you certainly don't create a long-term owner. Instead, you're creating somebody who tries to maximize today's stock price through whatever means necessary and then to cash out. And that can potentially be very, very damaging mm -hmm. to firms.
We are running out of time, but one last question. You said, how do we do it with teaching the CEOs to think about long-term owners? You, how, what's your answer? I believe we need to educate yeah. both board members who are often quite blasé about CEO compensation. Yeah. So in, in my work I talked to a lot of board members and I try to learn from them how they think about CEO compensation. Yeah. And the answer I get unfortunately way too often is, oh well, I just listen to what the comp consultant has to say and then I kind of just sign off on it. Mm -hmm. That is very, very dangerous because comp consultants very often just do what everybody else is doing, trying to not step out of line and somehow trying to not be offensive. That really curtails innovation and I want board members to think much more about long-term CEO compensation, focusing CEOs on long-term value generation with maybe a 5, 10, 15 or even 20 year horizon. And I believe that's very doable. It just means that we have to lengthen the holding requirements on equity. We probably want to move away from options. We probably want to move away from anything that induces these breaks or these steps drops in CEO compens about me in CEO incentives mm -hmm. over time and just gets them to focus in a very, very smooth manner on what happens to that firm over the next 10, 15 or 20 years. A wonderful ending. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching.